It's been a game changer for me. You know, I, I can race cars like I used to again, which basically means I can continue to do what I love to do professionally, which is compete, and not only that, but at the highest level. I also love that because of the software architecture, the system is transferable. I've been racing in a Hyundai Elantra and TCR car, but in the future, I can take this with me to any number of race cars. Yeah, the, the future's exciting. Um, to start in 2025, I'll be making my debut in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Suit Championship, racing a Corvette Z06 GT3 Alt, which is a big step up for me in power and in competition. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, my name is Grant Browning, and I'm the Motorsports Design Office Manager. Um, so we had to integrate like throttle and braking into the steering wheel. We were able to produce a, a pretty nice, tight little package that kind of seamlessly is integrated into the existing uh, race cars and can be installed and uninstalled relatively, relatively quickly and, and doesn't interfere with the able body drivers and gives the paraplegic drivers seamless integration into the car. We are very CE heavy, so we, we have a, a lot of the packaging and uh, load cases and requirements captured uh, virtually. We also do the design, manufacturing, assembly and testing, on track testing in-house. Um, so from that perspective, um, we have very quick feedback loops as we design and start manufacturing to assembly to test at any, uh, at any point in those steps there are issues or suggestions, there's kind of a quick path for a feedback loop and adjustments to design on the fly. I think that is one, one major advantage uh, that we have from that perspective. The other is there are a lot of people here in each of those fields that um, have a lot of experience and knowledge and are um, pretty dialed in intuitively to what will work, um, what won't work, how people are going to try to use our designs and they're articulate enough to give the designers and engineers feedback as to why their intuition is telling them it won't work um, and that helps us kind of produce our, our targets and load cases such that, um, that we can meet the requirements we need to in a reasonable amount of time. We kind of did this in three steps. It would um, the virtual design, then we had kind of a midway st step to try to have one quick feedback loop and iteration where we produced like non-structural 3D printed plastic parts, had Robbie into the shop, got as much feedback as we could on uh, the ergonomics of it, how it felt, what he wanted to change, what he liked or didn't like, um, how much um, force he could produce for the e-brake, um, how difficult it was for him to get in and out of the vehicle. Um, and from that, we were able to kind of do that quick iterative um, adjustment to design. And at that stage, we had to go uh, straight to functional part manufacturing. Um, and given the remainder of the, the timeline, that also basically needed to, we needed to use um, rapid prototyping solutions. So we had 3D printed aluminum parts for the majority of the, the hand control um, parts. And from there, we went into our first test. Yeah, I thought the first test using the new hand control system went about as smooth as I would have imagined. Not just from a system's functionality point of view, but in a usability point of view as well. The system has been designed for Robert, of course, but I found using the system very intuitive and very easy to switch back and forth between the hand control system and the normal systems of the Corvette. This is something that's very important for sports car racing, of course. It has to be easy and fast to switch systems back and forth once he gets in the car, to switch over the controls that he needs, and when the other driver is driving the car, then he has the controls that he's used to. The goal of the test was to prove all of the parts of the system worked as intended and worked safely with all of the backup mechanisms working properly. That part went so well that on the second day of the test, I had the time to get comfortable pushing the Corvette to the limits using the hand control system, and in the end was running lap times between the two systems that were only about a second apart within a relatively short amount of time. I'm excited to see how Robert finds his first experience in the Corvette and watch him get comfortable and get fast in this car.
So the Bosch EBS system is kind of the heart of the um, system. So it, it takes a signal input, that's kind of a request for braking, and then using uh, pumps and accumulators, it produces the, the brake pressure um, that's requested. Um, pre in previous systems, they used a, a hydraulic pressure as the input and then produced a, a different uh, pressure based on what those targets were at the, at the calipers at the corners. In our case, we worked with Bosch to use an electric input signal for that request. Um, on top of that, the system needs to do a few other things in order for the car to function as intended. So it needs to shut off the, the master cylinders from the e-brake and pedal to the rest of the system in order for their, their EBS unit to produce pressure without pushing, just pushing fluid out of the, back out the reservoirs. It also needs to monitor pressure at the pedal and pressure at the e-brake while it's uh, monitoring the input braking signal at the hand controls. Does it, it needs to understand if there is an error in the system and someone's applying pressure somewhere else, why they're doing that and which signal it needs to listen to. Um, the system also, um, if there's some sort of failure or emergency, and the EBS system fails, it, it needs to reopen up the hydraulic system under all circumstances of failure so that the e-brake can be used in an emergency or the brake pedal can be used in an emergency. If everything goes well, um, the system should be seamless within the car so that um, Robbie can basically push the car and himself to the limit um, without any restrictions. Um, and if that happens, You'll, you'll probably be hearing mostly about his success, right? not, not the, the systems behind it, um, and that's understandable. And that's the case with a, a lot of technically difficult engineering problems like this. If there are issues with it, you hear a lot about them. If they're seamless and transparent tools as they're intended to be, um, then you don't. And I think watching Robbie and the car perform on TV with our system will, and seeing um, its success will mean a lot to, to me and the rest of the guys. I think it'll be really cool to see.